It is time for our training camp, Pick 6 at 6, where we pick the top six storylines of the day, talk about them for you. That way you have everything you need to know in a nice, tidy 20 minutes here on the Team 980. Let's get it going, Anthony. Uh, by Well, uh, it's pretty easy what, what number one is today. Sam Howell is the starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders for the regular season. That announcement made before practice this morning by Ron Rivera. By the way, Anthony, just real quick, uh, housekeeping note uh, kind of-ish. Did you see Ron's, pre- like vi- visually see Ron Rivera's press conference this morning? So I saw JP take a photo of Ron sitting on the table with the mic down here. Do we have any idea what the hell that was about? I don't know. <laughs> Can we get an official statement from Commander's Public Relations on why Ron <laughs> Rivera, instead of sitting behind the table, I'm guessing they had some kind of tech issue with their microphone, and so they, they their broadcast partner's NBC4. Ron was holding, like, an NBC4 microphone. Uh, that's what it was. He was okay. holding it like so, this. Sorry, I'm going to be very pointed here for a second. This might offend <laughs> some people uh, from personal experience. But microphones do not work if you do not talk into them. So people that think because they're holding a microphone that there's osmosis from their hand to the the vocal projection into the microphone. That's not how it works. So Ron was like sitting on top of the table with the microphone down at his belly button doing this press conference. And I don't know why. I just, I'm curious. I would like to know. That's not actually an official part of our training camp six, pick six at six. That's just a bonus thing that I would like answers to. And perhaps I will investigate uh, at a later date. However, the most important thing is what he said into that microphone, which is that Sam Howell is the starting quarterback. Whatever mic issues the commanders were having before practice were fixed by after because Sam Howell sat down at his usual spot and talked about what it meant being named QB1. Cool, you know, for the opportunity that, you know, coach has given me. Um, so just super thank, shout out to Coach Rivera for just believing in me and always trusting me really since I got here. Um, you know, so I just shout out to him um, and just all my coaches, you know, EB, Tavita, uh, Zampezi, just Luke, all the guys, Jacoby. There's been so many guys here that have helped me in my development and my career um, that have ultimately led to the position I'm in today. So really just a shout out to all those guys. I think that's really classy from Sam to, to talk about all the guys who have helped him because this is a group project. I mean, playing quarterback in the NFL is hard. You can't do it by yourself and and you need a head coach obviously especially when that head coach is also in charge of the personnel department to believe in you and draft you um and then you need that ultimately that guy to believe in you and give you that shot in the first place uh in in not only training camp but in OTAs and and empowering you and surrounding you by the right people um Ron had to obviously redo his staff in the offseason and being able to keep Kenny Zampezi, who had a good relationship with Sam, but was clearly not the right choice for offensive coordinator, all due respect, um, especially when Eric Bieniemy was was on the table, um, was was a, a good decision. You know, keeping someone in the room with EB uh, and and obviously Tavita Pritchard, who uh, EB wanted to bring in, that could speak to Sam in language that he was familiar with. Say, you know, if there was a concept, and I don't know how often this happened, but conceptually, like. If there was something they did last year and called it X, but now EB calls it Y, having Kenny Zampezi, who's got tons of NFL experience, to be able to go, hey, man, it's just like Y that we ran last year, except for you tweak here and here, it makes things easier. And so you not only get that from Zampezi, but you get that from a guy like Brissett as QB2, pushing him as a competitor, but also helping him. And that's how a competition within a team should go. And I, I think in many ways this played out kind of perfectly. Obviously, he's still got to go perform now. But if if Sam Howell was going to be the guy, this is how this this should have gone. And I think it's great that Sam uh, credits all the people that helped him get to this point uh, for that. Um, then there's obviously kind of the emotional side of it. Like, what does this mean to Sam Howell to actually be a starting NFL quarterback? Yeah, I mean, it means a lot, of course. I mean, just to have this opportunity in front of me uh, means everything to me. But I think all the all of my work is ahead of me, and I know this is only this is only the beginning. And I know I have a a lot of work in front of me, and that's what I'm kind of focused on right now. That's the thing. For as much as uh, this is an exciting day, it's kind of it's it's a much smaller and uh, much less expensive version of what Josh Harris said. Like Josh Harris finally wins the bidding, he gets the team, he buys the team, he watches all that money uh, get wired out of his account and and go to wherever it went to get to Dan Snyder, and then he's like. 
oh shoot, now I own the team. I gotta, I gotta fix it. Like I got stuff to do. I gotta, I gotta go to work. And that's what Sam has done now, right? He suffered this. Hopefully, is going to help Sam make a lot of money, as opposed to uh, you know the six billion dollar price tag of buying a team. But I just so distinctly remember Harris's quotes of, "Hey, I'm sweating this. I've had a lot of sleepless nights. We got a lot of work to do. Getting to the starting line is a part of the journey. Um, it's not like you magically show up there, but the perspective to know like this is still the starting line." is very important, and that that's what Hal has now. And it's a lot easier to be at that starting line and not look backwards at all, not look around at all, and just be like, okay, now I can focus forward. I don't have to worry about winning the job. I don't have to worry about every mistake being the one that could cost me the job. But every mistake that I don't learn from is one that I could repeat in a game and cost our, this team game. Because now the responsibility shifts from you to us, if you will, or from me to us, if you're Sam. Um, from my seat, I guess it would shift from him to them, uh, from Sam to the team as a whole. And the good news for him is that support system that he talked about earlier is not going anywhere. Those are the people that are going to help him succeed. Uh, but a big day for Sam Howell in just his second year as a fifth-round pick, that is not a responsibility that a lot of fifth-round picks get. But in my humble opinion, he deserves it. Um, he is He is really talented. He's got a great head on his shoulders uh, from everything that I know about the kid and uh, certainly wishing him well uh, because I would like to cover a good football team and have all of you be able to root for a good football team, which comes with good quarterback play. Our training camp pick six at six here on the Hoffman Show. There's been a huge emphasis, number two, on the quick game in this offense. It is a big part of what Patrick Mahomes did. I think you saw in the game the other night in Cleveland that there was a ton of plays where Sam just had options to get the ball out quickly. Same thing with Jacoby and and Jake Fromm, although Fromm, they ran the ball a ton uh, when he was in there. But just quick over the ball, quick, you know, kind of just outside the hashes, kind of center of the field stuff to get the ball into the playmaker's hands quickly and avoid pressure. So... How is that quick passing game coming along? Here is Ron Rivera before practice today. I've seen uh, good decision-making and accuracy. He gets the ball out quickly. He's got quick twitch to make a decision. Um, You know, and again, like I said, there are some things. There's been some growing pains, you know. um, There are a couple examples from from, from the the, the Cleveland game that, that, you know, we've worked on and corrected, and we saw it happen in Baltimore's practice. Almost the same exact situation, and in the Baltimore practice, he answered the question. You know, he didn't answer the question in the preseason game, but it was something that was worked on, something that he had practiced, and then sure enough, it happened in one of the practice drills with Baltimore, and he made the right decision and said, okay, there's growth. He, he gets that. Those are the kind of things that, that we were looking for, is that he doesn't repeat the same mistake, that he learns from his mistakes, that he can self-correct at times if he has to. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing, right? Does he actually learn from the mistakes? Because it, like we're going to have to live with him making mistakes this year, and they're going to have to live with him making mistakes. What you can't live with is making the same mistake twice, three times, four times, you know, just never learning because that means you're not getting better. And, you know, for as good as Sam is right now and a nice little preseason he's had, it's within the context that if you play at this level – for 17 games like that's not the goal here the goal is to be at progressively better and if you this is who you are it's not good enough to be a long-term winning NFL quarterback the reason that it's exciting that he's already here is that he is a second year player that was a fifth round pick and if he's already this good where can he go especially because as Ron mentioned in the beginning of that answer he has some things you just can't teach he has a freaking live arm a freaky quick twitch ability with to, to get the ball out at multiple arm angles on the run and still throw with zip and velocity. Like, you can't teach that. And so the fact that they've got a guy with the, the raw materials, if you will, to do that stuff is why you look at him and go, this is not just a get-us-to-next-year project. He could be the guy moving forward, which would be the first time they've had a guy since Kirk Cousins. A reminder, uh, this is the seventh straight year that Washington will start a different quarterback week one. The last one to repeat was Cousins in 2015, 16, and 17. So for that quick game, um, the other part of it in terms of like, yes, he's got the, the quick twitchiness, the velocity to make that stuff happen. You also have to think quickly. And thinking quickly is actually 
you know, kind of backing it up before to pre-snap. Can you figure out what the defense is doing pre-snap and know where the ball is going to go or at least have it narrowed down to where it's a simple A-B decision if a linebacker, you know, floats one way, you throw the other, floats the other way, you throw back the first one. That kind of very simplified decision-making. And part of that comes with experience. Um, but there's also just kind of an understanding of the offense and what defenses are trying to do to you that goes into that as well. Um, you know, it's called the quick game because it happens quickly. Um, and, and that is going to be a process as well. And, and the problem is the reason I, I make that kind of tongue in cheek statement is there's not a lot of time to correct mistakes on the mental side. If all of a sudden you've got decided or not even all of a sudden, if you've decided pre-snap, it's this coverage, I need to go here and someone it's you're wrong or someone makes a play and the ball's already left your hand like that. That's when a lot of the interceptions happen in the quick game. You set hut, catch, throw linebacker falls off. Safety comes down. Defensive end drops in his own blitz. Like that's how you get turnovers in the, those quick game areas and trying to avoid those things. Seeing through the disguise is really important. Uh, as for how comfortable Sam Howell is with all of that stuff at this point, here was Sam after practice asked about that quick game. Yeah, um, yeah, the quick game is is awesome. You know, I love I love the, that kind of part of the offense that we have, um, and it makes my job easy, kind of getting the ball out of my hands fast. And um, we have some really good weapons on the outside, and that, that's a way to get the ball in their hands really fast. Um, so that's one of my favorite parts of the offense. And that's something he's used to. That's what they did at, at UNC, but. I, oh, God, I wish I knew the podcast. Greg Cosell and Doug Farrar do a podcast, and it's super nerdy and X's and OE, and I saw a clip of it on Twitter yesterday. And Farrar was talking about how the hashes and the difference of the geometry of the game makes such a difference from college to the pro. And, like, when you got that wide side of the field in college, on and like you're on the right hash and you're looking left, there is so much space. It is so much more condensed with the NFL hashes being far more centered, uh, much closer together. And so... Uh, being able to have that quick game happen even quicker um, is going to be really important to, to him for him to adjust to that. But it is something he's used to. The RPO stuff helps with that a ton because you can move defenders fairly easily. And so his comfort level with that part of the offense uh, is great that he's already there. And we'll see just how realistic that confidence it is starting Monday and, and continuing on forward into the regular season. So training camp pick six at six here on the Hoffman Show. Number three, uh, this is the sad part of the, uh, the show, sad part of the segment. Let's get the injury updates from Ron Rivera, Logan Thomas, Fedarian Mathis, Danny Johnson, ready, set, go. We'll see. We're going to increase a little bit more of his work off to the side before we start engaging him in, in some of the, the group activities. But he'll continue to do what he's been doing. Um, but he, he did say he's feeling better and better, and that's been a huge plus. How about um, Same thing with Fedarian. It's got to be a gradual thing. Um, and we'll see how that goes for him as well. Chase. Chase is in the same situation I told you guys about. You know, again, this is all about uh, getting getting past a certain point with the doctors, and then we'll go from there. But he's he's going to be out here. He's, he's allowed to do everything except for contact right now. Um, oh, uh, you know what? They were checking him this morning, and I haven't, I haven't gotten an update on him. So, first one, Logan Thomas increasing. That's good. We'll see ultimately where that lands. Fedarian Mathis... And like, it'd be really nice to get him back out there at some point soon. Um, he's a younger guy, could use the reps. Then, I mean, with Chase, like, again, I don't think he's going to play against Baltimore at this point. I mean, do you play him in that final regular season or final preseason game? Probably not. If none of the other starters are out there, you just get him to the regular season and then say, hey, saddle up, man, time to go. Um, you obviously have a ton of practice reps uh, between now and then, but it would be it would have been really nice if they could have gotten him out there. Um, just a little bit more practice against another opponent, especially after he missed the joint practices. I mean, it'd be even better if like Ronnie Staley and Morgan Moses were playing Monday night and Chase could go against them, but Baltimore's not playing their starters. So um, not as big of a deal for Chase to beat up on some second stringer or you know take any kind of risk on Monday night. Uh, as for the Danny Johnson injury, uh, if you missed the story this morning, it was reported first by Pro Football Talk that Danny Johnson has a rotator cuff injury sustained on the play that started one of the brawls or one of the fights, one of the scuffles, whatever level of violence you want to call it, in the joint practices with Baltimore. Johnson was body slammed by Mark Andrews. I mean, it was, it was somewhere between a body slam and a tackle, but like in a 
one, there's no tackling in, in practice. Two, like Danny was not anticipated being tackled. Um, and so it wasn't like some theatrical body slam out of WWE. Um, it, the, the contact was very real. And, and if he lands on his shoulder, like that can do real damage. And apparently that's some version of what happened. And uh, let's just say Ron Rivera wasn't exactly psyched about how that all went down. Yeah, I'm, I'm upset with the way it happened. It's just unfortunate, too. You know, um, and to what extent, uh, you know, we don't know yet. And, and we won't know anything until, uh, well, they might know something now. I just haven't had a chance to talk to Al. But, you know, it's unfortunate that it didn't happen at all. Yeah, to say the least. Uh, Mark Andrews, you, you know, not body slam people. Then you, you don't have that happen. And um, Andrews, he's a great player. But that dude, that dude, uh and the, the joint practices was, uh, ha- had some villain energy. I'm going to put it that way. Like had that on day one, day two, he st- wound up stomping off the field, um, left early, uh, you know, didn't like whatever was happening. Just, I don't know, just big, big ick, uh, Mark Andrews, the two days of joint practices. And I hope Danny's good. Um, he's, he's a valuable part of this team as a depth piece who can, fill in in a pinch on any and is going to at least make like he might get beat but he's going to make you earn it and that's really really valuable uh as a backup piece you know he's he's going to be assignment discipline and assignment sound uh even if he has someone go up over him because he's not the biggest guy but he also plays on special teams like danny johnson's going to make this roster as long as he's healthy and i so i really hope he's healthy he's a good dude and i uh, would love to see him get back out there as soon as possible uh, as soon as possible, I guess, would be the preseason. And Ron Rivera asked today about the guys above Danny Johnson and the like on the death chart. How much will the starters actually play in Monday night's game, knowing, by the way, that Baltimore will not be playing theirs? Um, no, that's the that discussion we're going to have tonight. As a coaching staff, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it to begin with, and then we'll solidify that tomorrow night. Uh, I love how he says we'll solidify that tomorrow night uh, because the commanders do practice tomorrow morning and Ron Rivera will be speaking to the press in the morning. So he will certainly be asked again, at which point he will probably say, you know, we've had some initial discussions. You know, maybe we're, we're still thinking about it. We're going to finalize that tonight. You guys will find out when we take the field on Monday. Thanks, Ron. It is what it is. Um, I mean, honestly, for the preseason, I actually think it would be smart for them, especially if starters are going to play. They should actually announce that for business purposes. And I, there's like winning and losing. You'd rather win than lose, but it doesn't matter in the preseason. And so considering it is a home game, considering it is the first game of the, and look, this is not me before I get started in this, before I say what I'm about to say, like Anthony, do not clip this and put it on social media. Uh, our digital department, this is not some massive, like demanding take from me. Do not make more of it than it is, but it would be smart to say, you will see the starters and see if you can get a couple more fans in the stands on Monday night. Um, It's the first game of the Josh Harris era. If the starters were going to play, you shouldn't make the decision to play them one way or another, but being secretive about it is silly because it's the preseason and maybe it's just kind of how they're going through the process. They want to get through practice tomorrow before they decide, make sure there's not an injury, make sure there's not whatever. So I, I'm not even saying like there isn't football reasons why they wouldn't announce this, but if they know, they should definitely leak out that the starters are playing for business reasons to get a little bit more hype around the game uh, because that, that would be smart. Um, and there's no competitive disadvantage because it's the preseason and who cares about winning and losing. Just a thought. Just a thought. Uh, last but not least in our training camp pick six at six, number six, the left guard battle. Uh, now that we've got a starter at quarterback, hey, Ron, you ready to name a starter at left guard? We're, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. You know, we're going to continue to evaluate that. You know, having um, Sadiq back out on the football field now, um, I think it's going to continue that for us. Um, but no matter who it is, um, the, the, the third guy is going to have an opportunity to play as well. So, you know, we just got to look at that and continue to work and see how it, grow, how it goes. Do you know what he means, Anthony, by the third guy? That's a weird a weird quote. Yeah, I don't know who. Uh, Tyler, nah, I don't know. I mean, Tyler Larson, um, you know, he's played some guard. Uh, Ricky Stromberg's played some guard. Um 
Mason, you know, Mason nah. Brooks. Like, I don't know what he's talking yeah, about. I don't, third, I don't know but, what he's talking about either. He, I think he's just talking. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes he'd be <laughs> doing that. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I think that they're going to not announce that probably till week one. Like, they're going to go out there on Sunday and you're going to know who the starter is because the announcers will be like, and the offensive line, looking down there, they didn't know who's going to start at left guard. It looks like it's... Insert Sadiq Charles or Chris Paul here. Right? Like, it's... And part of that is because they are probably terrified to announce Sadiq Charles and then have him get hurt again. So if you just keep it open it and like, hey, we're just going to evaluate it all the way through... You give Sadiq all the one reps behind the scenes. Nobody knows. Um, and then, you know, you kind of, on background, tell reporters, like, look, we want it to be Sadiq, but, like, this dude gets hurt again. We can't rely on it, so it's no freaking use in reporting it. Like, that's how these games work sometimes. And if, if I was Ron Rivera, I would not be in a rush to announce because what I don't want is to announce Sadiq and then he gets hurt again, and now it's like, oh, we're playing our backup left guard. I'd rather have the narrative be, and Chris Paul's mind up being like, oh, yeah, I'm the starter. Like, I won the job. Um, so I think that one's different than quarterback. I think you just wait. Um, and by the way, Chris Paul also, if the decision doesn't make itself with injury, Chris Paul's play might also make that decision. Chris Paul might still beat Sadiq out straight up. So um, I, I actually think that is one where you need more data and more information. Um, and some of the things that, you know, were – a little silly about the quarterback waiting, although I, again, started the show talking about how I understand why that was the case, but there was no decision to be made. You knew it was Sam. I think in the left guard case, there's still more data to be taken in, and so uh, they'll do that and, and ultimately name a starter when the time is right, which might be as they trot out there and say, hey, Sadiq, you're, you're starting to guard today, uh, week one against Arizona. That is our training camp. Pick six at six here on the Hoffman Show. We do it every single day, the Commander's practice and uh that is going to be or at least training camp practice which means we got a couple more next week and then we will we have a version of pick six that we're planning in the regular season as well to tell you more about that when we get closer to when we get back here on the radio what are we watching on tv this weekend some good stuff some interesting uh interesting things including one that i've already watched that i gotta talk to anthony about that's next here on the team 980 This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.